So, you know, I was thinking about the mobility field days and, and, you know, we, for me, this is the fourth year and, you know, MFD4 was the first one, right? And it was a coming out. In fact, we, we didn't really have a new product to talk about, uh, but we were just trying to, you know, I was trying to build a little bit of street cred. We were talking about the history of innovation at, at, at Fluke. Uh, we had uh, uh, talked about things we'd done, like, uh, you know, we reimagined portable network test with Link Sprinter. We we're the first ones with the cloud service, leveraging the phone for the UI, and how we really had this vision of, of providing holistic visibility. Uh, you know, Mobility 5, we finally had something, right? That fall, about four or five months after MFD4, we introduced uh, Etherscope, kind of as our, our Queen Mary, the, the tip of our technology sphere, and started talking about AirMapper, uh, which was our ecosystem for doing uh, surveys uh, on both Etherscope and on AirCheck, and how it, uh, how it interacted with, uh, with the uh, Link Live Cloud Service, as well as, as, well as uh, AirMagnet. Survey Pro, we talked about our how, how we envisioned sharing, right? And really this unencumbered collaboration that you didn't have to have a license, anybody could could jump in your account and 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 you could run across multiple monitors and this incredible visibility that we were going to try to bring to the industry. Uh, last year, uh, as you may recall, uh, kind of focused on on uh, Lanver, right? People are starting to deploy N based T APs, and uh, and 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 you know one of the demos was I, I took an old 1996 uh, Fluke box that wouldn't even pass one gig uh, certification, uh, and and actually ran 2.5 and 5 gig over it for hours with without a single error, right? So really, the 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 thing there was. Hey, you know what? Your existing cable is probably going to work. As a in in the in the realm of all the headaches you're having, thinking about about deploying six six e, uh, you know, maybe cabling isn't one. Maybe ripping and replacing your cable plant isn't one of them, right? But but what you do need to look out for is impulse noise, right? And that's another thing. You know, not only will certification tell you it won't pass the traffic that it, that it likely will because digital signal processing is so much better. Uh, but what you do need to look out for is, is, is either ESD or EMF, uh, basically noise stuff. And, and then kind of in the second half, talk more about uh, uh, segmentation and security and, and discovery of, of networks and things like that. So, so when we got to, to seven, uh, I, I, I kind of thought about, about what to do. And, and, you know, Mobility Field Day 4 was actually kind of the hardest, right? Because we were coming out as a brand and, and you know, personally, I felt like I, I had to build some street credibility. So I was showing a picture of, you know, me, my paper route and how I bought my first oscilloscope and, and, and things like that, right? But, but so we're going to fix that today, right? We're going to, we're going to actually introduce a new product and... Uh, but, but for first, we'll, we'll, I want to talk about laws a little bit, because that's kind of what governs a lot of new product development. So let's see if this works. Hang on. There we go. All right. So question to the panelists, what's probably the most famous law in technology? It depends. Moore's. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. All right. You're, you're right there with me. All right. So there we go. See, now thanks. All right. So Moore's law. Uh, so, you know, more 1965, uh, uh, in a heavy integration happening. Uh, people didn't even necessarily believe ICs were going to happen. They thought it was still going to be discrete componentry. And, uh, and he came along and said, look, basically computing and memory is going to double every 18 months. And, and in fact, turned out to be uh, quite right. Uh, uh, last year, uh, talked about another law, Sh Shannon's theorem, right? And and uh, amazing scientist, right? On on par with uh, with Tesla and Einstein, uh, and uh, and his theory of communications that basically pushing stuff over media is going to be limited by the the bandwidth, the signal, and the noise, right? Something we know. And and in fact, I talked about that a fair amount about how you know the whole race to higher bandwidth has been just cramming more bits into any quantum of time. I did add the uh, 1024 over here on Wi-Fi seven, but basically, as you, as you run things tighter, you know your your immunity, keeping immunity to noise is is going to be harder. And so, and, and I think it's kind of cool to see uh, Shannon, this guy in 1948, right, AT&T Labs. Uh, and 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 you can even see in modern stuff, right? In in, in the development of what encoding to use for N base T in the in the IEEE, uh, here they were talking about how how close they had gotten, you know, with with their encoding to 
Shannon's limit, you know, Shannon's capacity, right? So that, that's freaking amazing, right? Uh, and so, uh, so, and, and, and we see Shannon in practice, right? Links train down in speed automatically, uh, qualm levels uh, automatically adjust as you move nearer or further to, to an AP. Uh, so, you know, we're living, we're living Shannon all the time, but there's kind of a lesser known law you may not be aware of that governs high tech uh, uh, almost more than any of these. And, and that's, that's Conway's law. And uh, uh, this is called Conway's law. It actually came out of, eventually was named out of the book, The Mythical Man Month, if some of you remember that, but uh, it was about IBM system development, but but Conway quite quite brilliantly observed that that really uh, technology is constrained by organizations, and and so uh, and so uh, you know the organizations that we are constrained as companies as vendors to produce designs that are that are basically copies of their organization, representative of of, of their organization. So when you think about us, right, we started as a as a uh, a little startup in a strip mall, uh, Forte Networks, you know, mid '90s, and then uh, and then got bought by Everett. Uh, these guys were doing cable tests. They decided they needed some action on the active network side. Right, fine. Uh, then, uh, uh, but since they're on the cable side, they then later bought Microtest in Phoenix. Uh, and and by the way, Phoenix and Microtest was where the AirCheck G1 was developed. Uh, and then sometime later. You know, decided we need to get more into Wi-Fi. Bought Air Air Magnet uh, in the Bay Area, and then and then and then. But well, by then, even though uh, we were in Colorado Springs, uh, you know, we, we'd we'd gotten big enough. We split into into two, actually three groups. I should have three, maybe even four pins here, right? But we certainly had the low the low end handhelds. That was sort of my my line. And then you know we had the high end, you know, the forty thousand dollar OptiView. And then we started to have a systems group with with visual networks and TrueView. And so uh, and then and then uh, uh, and then at some point we got by Fluke got bought by Danaher, a big holding company, and and they uh, this was the era of you got to uh, remember when they had like uh, cruise ships offshore in California with with contract engineers, right? Uh, and because they couldn't bring them in for immigration reasons. Well, you know, so Danaher basically decided, hey, we're going to build uh, a development centers, uh, tried it in India. That didn't work. Went to went to Shanghai. And so we had a, a so uh, and, and we were incumbent. We, we had to develop products in Shanghai. Uh, uh, we had to do something right. So I ended up, turns out the uh, Lynx printer, Link Runner AT, Link Runner G2, all, all came out of that group, right? So, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, along the line, then Netscout bought us, right? That was about a three year stint, 2015 to, Dan, Danaher decided they didn't want to be in the communications group because valuations were too high to acquire more companies. And, uh, and so they sold us to Netscout. Uh, and then Netscout decided that, hey, everything we're doing is rack mounted. And what are these hand goobers that need injection molding? That, that's, that's a non-starter. Uh, and so, uh, so they shelled us out and then, uh, and then we became Net Ally. And, and, and this last pin here is if you wonder where the name Net Ally came from, it's from an acquisition of Viola Networks that was done by Fluke in 2008. And one of the, products they had was called net ally it was a voip tester some of you may even know this and there's a lot of history in this room so so that's actually where that that well so when we went looking for a brand name uh you know our, our owners weren't going to cop up adk for a naming uh study so we just grabbed an old name that we already had trademarked so that that's that's us right and so you can sit here and go wow well look we got we got all this stuff here's our here's our history of innovation you know but but another way you can look at it, and because I'm kind of a realist about this, is it's kind of a history of snowflakes, right? Because, you know, per Conway, every product is a representation of, of the organization at, at that time. And so, uh, so uh, and, and, and I have a spreadsheet of probably uh, 150 things, right? And I can, where I, where I try, I called it the sparse matrix, right? Because any little feature showed up on any little product. We had, we had four product planners, we, you know, we, we had, you know, not only geographic separation, but then just, just, uh, you know, lack of communication stuff going on. And so, uh, so I'll, I'll pick this a simple little sliver here that everybody can relate to, uh, DHCP, right? 
Uh, in the Link Runner G2, uh, we we added a feature called uh, DHCP options, right? Sometimes it's just a particular line of business getting a certain request from a certain customer. Actually, this is, I think, to be honest with you, this is Blake at the time had, had, had asked me about this and had another customer. And so, uh, so, uh, so that got implemented on that product, but that was a completely different architect, right? Then, then as we got into the into the into the one touch, right? This was this was one touch is interesting, right? This is because Everett had a frame that was used for cable test, and yeah, and we didn't want to develop a whole another platform. We did the one touch module that that plugged in the back, and so, but but we we did a feature there. This was as we were doing this. This was the era of uh, consumerization of IT, right? So. Some of you go to Best Buy, buy something. People were plugging things into, into uh, corporate networks uh, and they were serving up DHCP addresses, right? So in the middle of your 10.2 space, all of a sudden, you know, everybody would start getting 192.168, you know, dot zero dot Xs. And so we had a feature uh, called DHCP second offer. So as we, as we, as we grow, uh, we uh, so, so so this is this is just one thing, right? Just DHCP, right? Uh, and and uh, and and kind of a fairly static feature. See what I did there? Uh, but but uh, but in in the realm of what's going on in the world, uh, you know, you got the speed of light change going on. You know, just with with WPA. Uh, three and wide by six and six gig space and channel plans and and then and and upgrades and in base T and higher power PoE. I mean, it's just a lot going on, right? So so we really had to as we as we became Net Ally, you know, uh, er everything sort of collapsed back to Colorado Springs and uh, and 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 I, I took over as planner for everything and and uh, and we really had to kind of. Uh, get our act together, right? We had to, we had, we, we could, there's no way we can keep up with the change in technology with, with different, our, different development teams. We had to get to this thing we call the common core, right? And so, and, and kind of, and I mean, the, the good news was there was a rich, uh, fertile ground of technology and intellectual property we could pick from. We could take the discovery library out of the, out of the, uh, $40,000 Optiview. We could take Airwise out of AMM. We knew how to do PoE loading and power out of out of the Link Runner G2. We knew it. We knew how to do line rate performance test out of the out of the uh, Link Runner 10 jig. We had, you know we had, we had we had we had FPGA capabilities. We had injection mold. You know we 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 were, we're a full stack shop right from 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 uh, industrial design all the way up through you know pulling a web page. So so we had to get to this thing called the Common Core. Came out with the Etherscope. Then, then uh, a little bit later, uh, we had Link, Link Runner 10 gig uh, came out. And if you're kind of following the pattern here, right, it's probably obvious where I'm going uh, for our introduction here. So, so here's the Etherscope. Uh, the uh, and so today we're gonna. Uh, this is a soft introduction of the AirCheck G2, and shoop, there we go. Uh, and just to kind of frame it up for you, it's it's the same size and price, about the same size and price as as the as the link as the AirCheck G2, right? So you know how big it is. Screen's a little bigger, a uh, little a uh, little easier to manipulate, uh, things like that. Uh, of course, has AX, uh, 6E, tri-band, WPA3, all that. Uh, we're taking the the link scan architecture. I'll talk and demo that here in a bit. Uh, but basically, it's if you have two radios, one is linked and one is scanning. There's a lot of things you can do and discover and 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 tell the person about their network. And so uh, we were also able then to bring discovery and path analysis. So uh, sort of uh, uh, again, this 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 massive discovery library that that used to cost you know thirty thousand dollars, right, or, or even even ten k, right, on Etherscope, right, bringing that down into into this price category. Uh, client to call it auto test. I'll, I'll demo that. Remote operation. Remote operation. You're going to see that because I'm going to demo things that are remote. And uh, you know we never really had remote operation on AirCheck G3 yet. It's Probably one of the you know how often are you someplace and the problem is in a different location and and uh, 
And so re remote is huge, bigger than ever. You can do it if you're if you're uh, in band. You can do it. You can do it with BNC. If uh, but you can also do do it through you know multiple firewalls through through Link Live through the cloud service. Uh, improved power system. We'll talk about that. A real browser. Right. I, I've seen. Uh, I was in an airport recently, and and to get to the guest Wi-Fi, you had to watch a video first. You know, and so that's how they monetize it. Uh, so interesting, Bluetooth BLE. Uh, we have a spectrum analysis uh, option, and uh, and of course supporting third-party apps and USB-C. So here's just to give you a little perspective. Right here's EtherScope on the right, uh, and you know it it it's our it's our beefy burrito, right? It has to have a fire-breathing <laughs> PGA so it can do eight streams of line rate performance test at 10 gig and support 10 gig fiber out to 80 kilometers and and you know and all sorts of stuff this is actually a, a little image I, I shut down here right it had active cooling in fact the the cooling system the fan and the duct work in the etherscope cost more than the radio uh just to put it in perspective right uh so uh uh, so that's that. Uh, here you have the air check, passive cooling. You can see the size uh, and uh, gives you some sense of that. Uh, you know, there's features, but then there's kind of attributes, right? And on, and, and on the attribute side, the, the, the power system's just been completely revamped. Uh, even though it's the same size, we figured out a way to put another cell in there. Basically, you know, we're, we're, we're north of 10 hours, right? Uh, on, on the battery life, uh, which is which is great. Uh, charge time on air checks uh, never been a hallmark, so so we brought the charge time time way down, uh, and uh, basically about three hours for for a full charge. Uh, uh, USB C. I just was kind of eavesdropping on the Salona thing, right? And he talked about uh, the. Uh, Oh, the the uh, spectrum analyzer for for CR CBRS right but but it was USB C and in fact then he said oh man too bad Apple doesn't have it right because you, you can't you know you can't do it or you need some adapter or whatever uh, the uh, uh, so USB C right just let's just that that's the universal thing uh, and and with USB C and moving away from proprietary barrel connectors you can now just get a you know buy a buy a brick uh, and 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 run for twenty hours you know off, off off of another brick so so power system huge improvement. Uh, Link scan architecture. Uh, this this is this is big, right? This is where one radio scans the test radio scans, and it's picking up all the APs and clients, right? It's promiscuous, so it's grabbing all that in the air and building up and and running that into Airwise, the database, and and then uh, and then uh, gathering all that information. At the same time, if we're linked, we can do active discovery, and and it's particularly good when you're linked on the SSID of interest where uh, where we can actually come over here so that we can basically uh, if we if we get the same so now we're actually uh, connecting or on the same SSID we talk to these guys we ARP them we get we get back their uh, you get back their MAC address we line it up with the MAC in the air and that's how we break this the, the, the layer two ceiling right so but but basically simultaneous capability for example, to do a passive survey while you're doing an active one by one, while we're doing Bluetooth BLE survey, while we're doing Wi-Fi analysis, I'll show you some of that, and network discovery, and all of that can be happening uh, while while the expert can be a thousand miles away uh, watching that screen remotely at the same time as the as the user, right? And that and that's kind of cool too because he can be he can either be guiding him, hey, let me show you how I do this, or or he can be watching him. Uh, and so just a lot of power in that in that shared screen. So uh, it lets us pursue this you know one walk many views mantra we have right of of building topology maps and 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 all kinds of heat maps and 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 uh, tables and with export to, to excel if you want right and, and network element analysis and, and all the things that we do there uh we you know it's funny when i first used this slide a couple of years ago it was it was hey that that we wanted to to that we thought a contribution that we could make uh particularly in the handheld was to show you something other than mac addresses well you know the world's just gotten screwier since then right so uh 
I mean, go no further than 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 the local admin bit, right? This would be Jim Palmer of Ruckus talked about this at uh, WLPC a few months ago. Uh, and uh, basically, you know, if you have a two six A or E there, that's the that's the local bit. You know, I grew up in a world where where MAC addresses were universally unique, right? So this remains just mind boggling to me how I can see uh, clients doing randomization uh, of MACs all over the all over the place, and at the same time, APs as they're you know, it seemed like it used to be, oh, we're going to carve out a base MAC and 16 MACs above that, and you can go up to 16 SSI, SSIDs. And, and now it's like, mm, you know what, we'll just, we'll just twiddle any bits we want, right? It, it, and I know this because we're constantly trying to figure out how to do AP grouping, and every vendor has a different recipe for, for what bits they decide to twiddle when. So, so uh, the work that we did here is, is more pertinent than ever because of, because of, of, of all, the, uh, all the craziness. So we, we break the ceiling. That means instead of seeing this as a, as a uh, you know, mysterious device, Wi-Fi client, right? We can get an IP address. With an IP address, it, gets, it lets you do a bunch of things. We can start to understand what services it's running. Oh, it's really a printer. Uh, and, and then again, with an IP address, we can, we can, we can, we can query it. What's your SNMP name? What's your MDNS name? What's your NetBIOS name? Uh, and and really start to put some some color on this. So, uh, I, in fact, you may remember I was showing how even uh, uh, you know even on flights, right? I could see people's uh, uh, Apple devices uh, just hooked to the plain Wi-Fi, right? So, uh, so uh, before I go to the demo, you know, one last thing here is uh, you know multiple deployment options, right? And and we see you know two main themes here, right? There's there's on the go, right? This is somebody like you. You're at the point of presence. You're you're in the house. You're 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 doing troubleshooting. You're doing site analysis. You're validating provisioning. I mean, if there's one thing we've heard in the last three days, it's you know AI, ML, you know, used to just be RRM. Uh, but uh, but you know everybody thinks their systems are gonna solve the problems. I've been hearing about the self-healing network for, I don't know, 15 years now. So we'll see how that all goes. But, you know, at the end of the day, you might just need something other than the piece of glass and the knock to, 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 to know what's going on or as a second source of truth. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, you, and, and, and survey, right? Uh, and, and I don't, you know, the reality is, you know, the hand, we're not going to, we're not going to be the tool for surveying a uh, million square foot uh, Amazon distribution center, right? You know, if you're that SI and you deployed those thousand APs, uh, it, you know, you know, I'm going to be honest, right? That, that, that's not us, but, but there's so many other applications for, for uh, Wi-Fi survey. Uh, and, you know, it's really just, what am I seeing here? What am I seeing there, right? It's just sort of a location aware uh, Wi-Fi analysis. And so, uh, and then, and then, and then spectral analysis, uh, of course, if, 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 you know, if you're, if you can, if you know how to interpret any of that. Uh, and, and so that's, that's, the, that's sort of, you know, one of the main models. The other one is, and, and we focus on this a lot because we hear this constantly, right? Uh, that, uh, that, 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 you know, I, I just have all these remote sites. How am I going to manage this? Or, or pop-up sites, right? Think of COVID, pop-up hospitals, uh, uh, a movie production company, pop-up scenes, right? And all the cameras are, are, are Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Uh, and so, uh, so the, this ability to basically FedEx it, you know, in, and, and literally, you know, an admin can, can take it, set it in the middle of the site, Connect it to the guest Wi-Fi just like you would your cell phone. Boom, you're in, right? You can do everything now. Uh, we have auto test profiles. I'll show you those. That lets you can the the test that you want to do. So it further de-skills the product. Uh, and then and then uh, you can just drop it in, not even use it, and just grab snapshots off of it of, of the entire environment. And then and then we have some really nice lightweight monitoring. Uh, so uh, and then of course all this feeds into Link Live. I'll show you the new sharing capability. Uh, super cool because you can just pick anything in your link live repository and share it out to anybody. You can give it to your neighbor, right? Look, look, here's how much you're screwing up my Wi-Fi. Uh, 
uh, and uh, and they you know and and let them see it for three days. Uh, and so that sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, I, I actually think our work here kind of loosened up some of the licensing of the other vendors in this space, right? Because because they had to. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, along those lines, can you can you talk about licensing? Because that's one of the problems that we have when we hand these tools around to people. Do we have to buy an, another user license, or you know, what's the restriction no. there? The only restriction is is the tool, and so we we have Ally Care. Uh, and and uh, as the Airship G3 comes out, it'll include the first year of Ally Care, uh, and uh, but basically that's it. And 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 you don't even need that, right? You can use the tool in it, in it completely. We gate some of the features on Link Live, uh, and uh, but 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 that's about it. I mean, we're you know we're 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 pretty liberal about it. You know, we we would make even Lee Badman smile. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that, that's kind of our, our, that's kind of our vibe. So.